my new series, Everyday Fresh, I'm going to show you how to create smarter, faster, super yum meals using everyday ingredients and making them shine. There's nothing better than a recipe that makes you feel great, is super delicious, nutritionally upscaled and helps bring a little balance to your life. And of course, I'll be cooking some amazingly good, almost healthy sweets full of super nice, better for you ingredients. If you need speedy dinner solutions, fresh food in an instant, that delivers on taste as well as time, then Everyday Fresh is just for you. I just know you are going to love having a little Everyday Fresh in your life. In this episode, I'll be cooking a brown rice nasi goreng omelette. It's a perfect blend of my son's favorite dishes. A super flavored weeknight dinner made all in one pan. What's not to love? I'll also be showing you the most amazingly simple, better for you snack. This super delicious slice never fails to satisfy those sweet cravings. Then I'll be making my favorite summer dessert. Lime spiked mango and creamy coconut snow, the ultimate summer treat. First up, I'll be cooking my up-flavored version of bolognese, the spicy kick of chorizo and all the deliciousness of golden cauliflower in a rich tomato sauce. So simple, so yum. I'm going to cook for you my chorizo and cauliflower bolognese. It's my halfway dish to sneaking in lots of veg while having super big flavors. So I'm going to use some chorizo, I've chopped it up. The great thing about chorizo, it comes as a sausage, so all you need to do is take the casing off the outside and then just break it up or chop it up. And starting with this is like a shortcut to super flavor. Just need to pop it in our fry pan and fry that. It releases all the oils and the spices. Just gonna give that a stir around. Now most chorizo has a little bit of garlic already in it, but because my dish is huge on flavor, I'm going to add a little bit more minced garlic and some oregano leaves. Just layers of big, big flavors. Wow, that is smelling sensational already. Just want to fry the chorizo, get a little bit golden. It's releasing all that beautiful flavored oil. And then I've got a couple of different little sneaky ways to hide lots of veg in this dish. Now the other thing that I'm going to add to my bolognese is these little florets of cauliflower. What I'm gonna do so that they take on a whole new world is I'm going to pan fry them until they're brown and golden and caramelized. And that way the cauliflower takes on a really lovely, nutty, gorgeous flavor. Take this out of my pan, set it aside while I caramelize that cauliflower. And I'm just going to add some really nice, robust, extra virgin olive oil to caramelize my cauliflower in. And then in with our cauliflower, I've just cut it into really small, little mini baby florets. Does take a little while just to get it nice and golden and crunchy, but it really is worth the effort. Cauliflower takes on this gorgeous nuttiness. If you've got kids that really don't like the flavor of cauliflower, this will absolutely win them over. It's almost that strong kind of pungent cauliflower flavor that kids don't like disappears and you get this nutty, crunchy little nuggets and I bet they absolutely love them, my boys do. Put some pepper in there. Now with this dish, I haven't added any salt because I'm going to finish it with parmesan, which is traditionally a little bit salty. And depending on what chorizo you buy, that might be salty as well. So feel free to add salt at the end of this dish, which is what I'm gonna do after I taste it. But for now, just season that cauliflower with a little pepper. Just going to add some really simple zucchini strips to my whole wheat pasta. So we've kind of got noodles with noodles all together. 
And this is a super easy way to prepare them. I've just got a julienne peeler and all you need to do is just run it down the zucchini and it just falls into strips just like your spaghetti is. So you can just twirl that through your hot pasta and it's a really simple, yummy way to add extra veg. So all you need is about half the pasta that you would usually serve and then I just fill the rest up with these zucchini noodles. So I've got my zucchini noodles and add my hot drained pasta to that. Toss it about. Might just dress that with a tiny bit of olive oil, why not? This cauliflower is all golden brown, a little bit crunchy. It's taken on a whole new life. Let's finish it off. It's kind of traditional from here for bolognese. I'm gonna pop this chorizo back in and all that really lovely spicy oil that came out of it. And then just the usual suspects, some crushed tomatoes straight in. And then just a little bit of stock, beef stock or chicken stock. Just bring all the flavors together, cauliflower, the chorizo, everything starts to meld together now. I just need to simmer that until the stock's evaporated a little bit. Bolognese is at the consistency we want. I like mine a bit saucy. So just gonna grab a plate, finish this off. Just spin the pasta around while you're spinning the plate and it stands up so you get pasta with attitude and altitude. Look at that, how super pretty is that? That is amazing. Right, let's load on some bolognese. Pinch them at all. Get some of that sauce from the bottom of the pan. Big flavors here with that chorizo, the garlic. To finish it, little bit of creamy yumminess. So let me bust open buffalo mozzarella, pop that on the side, and then I've got some grated parmesan. Sprinkle that over, just to bring it all together. Pasta with parmesan, oh my goodness. How good is that? That is your new bolognese that is sure to please. More veg, more flavor, more yum. Hey! This next recipe is my brown rice nasi goreng omelet. It is a little bit of a strange hybrid mix up of three recipes that my sons really like. One night I went to cook their dinner and I couldn't decide what to cook them. They couldn't tell me what they wanted, so we ended up with all three in one. But it works out, it's really delicious. Just heat a fry pan, add some chilies, grated ginger, and some sliced green onions. Just mix them around until they're fragrant. Only takes about a minute. Smelling good. They're just a little bit crispy around the edges on the chili and the green onion, which is exactly what we want. I've just got a little bit of chicken mince. You could use pork mince if you like. You could use a little bit of chopped up firm tofu. It'd be delicious. Just give that a stir around, break it up, break up any lumps, just until it's golden and cooked through. And then I've just got some cooked brown rice here. You could even buy the packet already cooked brown rice. This is just a really quick throw together. Just pop that in. And then just a little bit of soy sauce just to flavor that up. Stir that all together. Now it kind of looks like fried rice and then it morphs itself into omelet. Okay, while that's cooking, I just need four eggs and a little bit of milk to make our omelet mixture. It's kind of crazy, but it works, trust me. Little splash of milk, just to loosen up the eggs in our omelet. Just give that a little whisk together, just until the eggs are all combined. Secret to getting your omelet cooked perfectly through and all of this mixture distributed evenly through the omelet so that there's no 
arguments as to who's having what bit, which happens in my house. Just pour the eggs over. And then what I like to do so the egg cooks evenly, just move the mixture around just to evenly distribute the egg and the rice and the chicken, all the yummy things. A couple of minutes to set. And then we've got some really yummy, big flavored, tasty toppings to serve. And what I've got here is some shredded green onion, some beautiful Thai basil. You can use normal basil, coriander, whatever you like. I've got some thick sweet soy sauce or ketchup manis, which is really lovely with this omelette. And some sriracha, which is my boy's favorite, but you can leave that in or out however you like. A little bit of chili. I love an extra burst of chili. Okay, our omelette is just set. I don't want to overcook those eggs. I'm just going to really gently cut it into quarters. Just get some wedges of this onto our serving plate. A little bit of green onion, just for pep. Some Thai basil leaves. And then this thick, sweet soy sauce, which I just like to dribble over the omelette. Beautiful sweetness, saltiness, beautiful with the egg and the rice. And then just for my teenage sons, a good dose of chili sauce, just the way they like it. And there we have it. Simple weeknight meal. Three of my boys' favorite meals, all in one. Delicious. This is one of my favorite better for you treat recipes from my new book, Everyday Fresh. It's my chewy chocolate almond bars. And there's nothing like having a stash of better for you treats hidden away in the fridge for when the mood strikes. And this one ticks all the boxes for me. First of all, all I need to do is line my tin and I just do it a cheats way. Tear off a piece of paper and so it fits the tin, I just fold it make a crease and pop it in. I'm using compostable brown paper, so I'm not gonna feel bad about using two sheets. Almond butter, naturally high in protein and all the good things. That goes in first ingredient for our base. Coconut flour, rolled oats. To stick it all together, some maple syrup, and then generous double dribble of vanilla. Mix that all together. Super simple ingredients to make our base. Scrape all of that in. And then I find the easiest way is just to press this down into the corners first. Just set that to one side. Just got some dark chocolate here, which is great for antioxidants. Also puts you in a fabulous mood. Once the chocolate is melted, and add the almond butter. And almond butter is just store-bought, ground-up almonds, just like peanut butter. And then tip it onto our slice. It's too good to leave any in the bowl. Just tip the tin, cover all of the base. Give it a tap to remove any air bubbles. So we get a beautiful shiny top. Off to the fridge for an hour till that sets and then you are going to have the most amazing, better for you, raw treat slice. Just on standby in the fridge, wherever the mood takes you. Slice is set. Let's keep that out. Move that out of our way. Look at that. That is the most delicious, raw, better for you treat that you can have stashed away in your fridge for whenever you need a delicious little bite. Mm. I can't wait to show you my mango and coconut snow. It's my absolute 
favourite summer dessert, fruity mango spiked with lime and then smooth creamy coconut snow and you eat them together, it's so delicious. So just a really simple cheats sugar syrup, boiling water and a little bit of raw caster. Just put those in together, a little whisk around. It's a really simple dessert. You can make it ahead of time. I'm going to show you a really fun way of how to serve it. It's really great. It's one of my faves. I've got some coconut milk here. Just pour that in. And just a little dribble of vanilla. It's a really simple, the coconut base. I like to call it snow. Some people call it granita. So all you need to do is pour it into a flat tray because we're just going to rake it with a fork to make those ice crystals like to make snow. So I just find it easier with a big flat tray, you get more raking, more snow, more little flakes. So that's the first one done. That's our coconut base. Let me just move this to one side and I'll show you how easy it is to make the mango. Another really simple sugar syrup. And the reason we put sugar when we're making snow is that the sugar crystals actually stop big ice crystals forming. So when I rake it, it is more snow and granita-like. If we didn't add extra sugar, then you'd just have like a big ice block. In with some more raw caster. Just mix that around to dissolve the sugar, which it does really easily in the boiling water. Such a good trick. And then for the mango, I've got some mango puree. I'm using fresh mango because they're in season. But if they're out of season, just buy some frozen mango and blitz it up. Just pop that in. What I really like with mango is a really generous spike of lime because I find those two flavors are so great together. And then we've got the creaminess of the coconut snow to scoop together when you're eating it. It's absolutely delicious. Then with the lime, I need about a teaspoon of lime rind and then a couple of tablespoons of the juice. So I'm just gonna take that nice green rind off just gently. I don't want any of the white pith. Then to get the most out of your lime, give them a little roll just to release the juice before I pop them through my juicer. Might need two, might need three. We'll see how juicy they are. Smells like summer mango, lime and coconut. I need about two tablespoons of juice. How do we go? Plenty of juice. Fab. Okay, give that a stir together. And then these two just go off to the freezer until they're firm. Looks nice and firm. Okay. So really simple to finish. Just take a fork and rake the top and that's how you get the snow. I might just grab another tea towel here just because my hand might get a bit cold. So you literally just rake your fork through just to break up the ice crystals and make your delicious snow. At this point, you can rake it, return it to the freezer and then rake it again before you serve it. I'm not sure I can wait that long, so we might just rake some off the top. This is my favorite way to serve. The snow is just in little coconut halves. Super cute, look at that. Could be on a little tropical holiday. You can top that with some little toasted coconut flakes if you like. Really lovely thing is to get a little bit of the mango and a little bit of the coconut at the same time, just like that. Mm -hmm. It's so good. This is my idea of summer heaven. Beautiful. So cute as well.